Tēnā tātou, kua kuevi nei i runga te kaupapo te rā nei i raro i te maru o tēnei whare. He tautoko nei ngā mihi kua mihia, nā reira tēnā kue ke te rangatira. And thank you all for coming today. So, Philippa has basically introduced how I'm a PhD student at Australian National University. Um, though I reside here in, in New Zealand in Rotorua, so I'm a remote student there. Um, today I wanted to talk about the Enderley Housing Project, um, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, Te Runango Kirikiri Roa, who drives this project, but also to the residents of the Enderley suburb in Hamilton. So basically I, I want to talk about the Enderley Housing Project as an example of urban development from a Māori perspective, and what I hope to achieve from the presentation today is to basically talk about how urban development can be managed from that perspective, but also um, how acknowledging the diversity of the Māori community um, and the community at large can increase the responsiveness and provide opportunities for innovation. So the starting point for me is really around the idea of complexity theory, and I won't go into that here, but the proposition I'm advancing is essentially that urban development is complex, and we mean by this that cities um, are a collection of uh, complex economic, social and organisational systems. And that um, understanding these in context is quite important and taking adaptive approaches to them uh, are also useful in managing their complexity. So what we're saying here too is that non-linear and systems approaches tend to be more effective uh, than linear, transactional or simple approaches. If we apply that to thinking about Māori communities and Māori needs, um, then we start getting to what basically Anuru was talking about in the different dimensions and the different layers within Māori community. And so if you start pulling back those layers, you start seeing mātauaka, mana whenua, and all those different dimensions which Anuru was talking about. And what this means in terms of interests and needs within the community, uh, with the Māori community itself, but also how the Māori community interacts with the wider society as well. As we advance with the thinking around this, we also come to an idea of the connection to place. And quite often we think of this in terms of the mana whenua connection to a location where cities are, uh, are built now. Um, but also we acknowledge that there are relationships for urban Māori, for uh, mātāwaka, as they uh, reside in, in a location, they also build that connection to place, as do tauiwi, as do um, non Māori as well. But in saying this, what we're not doing is uh, diminishing the relationship of mana whenua, but in acknowledging the broader relationships, we actually create a diversity and a richness to this picture um, that we can acknowledge within development. And so if we turn to the Enderley Housing Project and look a bit more specifically at Enderley. Um, Enderley is well known as being one of the more impoverished suburbs in New Zealand, uh, it's in Hamilton and uh, the east side. Um, it rates highly on the, well, it's 10 on the decile, uh, deprivation index. Um, high rate of unemployment uh, and uh, low median income in comparison to the city as well as nationally. If you're from Enderley, you're more likely to not have a qualification to not own your home. You're more likely to be part of a single parent family and also the presence of gangs and gang activity over um, a period of history as well. But on the positive side, um, there's a whole lot of social and cultural capital in, in Enderley as well. So there's a diverse population in terms of increased proportion of Māori and Pacific peoples, migrant communities, and the presence of an act of mana whenua, which is uh, Ngāti Waidere. Also, there are advantages too in that it's closely located to the CBD, um, to the university, and to the new Ring Road, which connects directly to Auckland and south to Cambridge as well. So this, these are the dynamics that the uh, Te Runango Kirikiri Roa has basically uh, formulated this uh, housing project over. Um, and so the dynamics essentially which um, the, the dynamics uh, for this essentially uh, are ways of addressing the poverty issues and the social issues which are uh, already in Enderley. Um, but the approach isn't a transactional one, it's more of a communal and complex uh, approach, a systems approach to this. Um, Te Runango Kirikiri Roa is an urban Māori authority. Uh, it was formed in the 80s um, under the guidance of the late Māori Queen and the then Mayor of Hamilton. Um, the involvement of the Māori Queen is quite important here because it forms a foundation for a relationship between mana whenua and mātāwaka, 
which comes to play in this project as well, as you'll soon see. The idea of the Enderley Housing Project is really around affordable housing, but as a systems approach, it's much more than affordable housing. It focuses on um, creating employment, on building community, on community regeneration. And so to say it's an affordable housing project is kind of true, but not the totality of the picture. Um, also, uh, it emphasises some of the importance around relationships with the tribe and within the community as well, and creating the connection to place. Now on the map here, um, basically the yellow blocks in the middle are the sections which um, are being used for the project. That land was acquired through the tribe, through the right of first refusal that, was, uh, that is in the Waikato settlement. So the tribe purchased 53 properties and on sold it directly to the Runana um, to do this project. And that helps to build what the model is. So in acquiring the 53 properties, uh, the Runanga has basically reduced or well, increased the intensification of the land so that it becomes 62 properties. They've also removed parking and put, put on, the, on the street, um, and along with ca uh, traffic calming measures as well. And so what that has effectively done is reduced the footprint of the, of, the, um, of the houses and the properties. And that helps to basically stimulate watchers um, properties at a reduced market value, so 75%. Um, the mix, the tenure mix is also important in terms of um, community regeneration. So there's a mix of ownership, so purchasing properties there, as well as social housing in the form of komatua housing, and also shared equity in the form of rent to own. Now the whole model essentially is built on the Papakaina model. And the Papakaina model um, is usually thought of as Māori land and traditional for tribal purposes, but this is essentially taking that model and applying it in a, an urban context. So that's where the innovation is. It's creating a community using the Papakaina model. Um, the logic here, which I won't go over uh, extensively, but essentially there are two parts. One is in owning your own uh, home that essentially increases your capacity to control your own future economically but also creates a connection to their land and having a sense of ownership in the community. The change model is relatively simple as well. Um, so when people can't afford a home, essentially the runanga is providing support so you know what you can afford, um, but also making the houses more affordable. That's the transactional view of it because there's also uh, wraparound services um, which go beyond the actual transaction and sale of the house around health and service provision and also around ho home maintenance as well. So this is more systemic uh, systems type of approach. And to do that, relationships are really important. So as you would have seen, the partnership with the tribe has allowed the purchase of the properties. Um, but also with the community, with monthly community meetings, um, essentially it's provided um, a capacity for co-design and co-production. Um, also there with Mana Whenua, they've named it Waidere Village after Ngāti Waidere and involved them in co-design as well. And I'm rushing over the findings here, given the time. But um, some of the observations, and I'll highlight the top one. Um, given the co-production elements and being involved with the community, the Runanga is in a way seen as part of the community. So over the last year, when there have been challenges, um, that the community has seen the Runanga as one of them, and they've defended and endorsed the project. Whereas council are seen on the outside because they're rarely seen uh, inside um, the community, are seen more as a foreign body and not defended. And I think some of those self-organisation elements uh, come out uh, in the example as well. Um, I suppose one last point, which I'll add, around the interest in development. It has been also interesting to see that the, the interest in the properties have come from uh, the community itself, as well as those who used to live in the community and want to return. And I think that also brings to place some of those themes around connection to place. Um, so I hope that has delivered what I intended around the presentation around managing the complexity um, and also some of the dynamics that are at play in terms of urban development from a Māori perspective. Mm -hmm. okay.